Good morning. This is Patricia Green Sotos of Gecko Yoga. And today I'm going to do a short home practice based on the concept of contralateral movement. Contralateral movement is the movement that we have when we walk. Opposite arm to opposite leg move as you walk. So when you step forward with your right leg, your left arm swings forward. So this is what is happening in our brain. We have two sides, two hemispheres, and the corpus callosum connects those two hemispheres. And having that connection and strengthening that connection helps our brain for walking, for movement, and for being able to access one side or the other. If you find that you're strongly right-handed or strongly left-handed, it's a good practice to once in a while try to brush your teeth with the other non-dominant hand or to try to use the mouse with the non-dominant hand just to give your brain that opportunity to strengthen that muscle. So we'll start off with a grounding meditation. You can certainly use the grounding meditation that's longer. We will keep this one short. If you're seated, roll your sits bones forward so that your spine is neutral. Feel how your sits bones reach into the earth. If you're laying down, feel how the back of your body connects to the earth like a new carpet of grass. Then invite ease into your body, relaxing your jaw, allowing your tongue to rest in your lower jaw. Inviting the roof of the mouth to be spacious and broad, releasing all the tension you might have in your face, your forehead, softening your throat and the back of the neck allowing your shoulders to relax away from your ears. Softening your lower back, releasing your tailbone. Grounding is the first fundamental, finding your relationship to the earth. Finding ease in your body is the second fundamental, and we use the doorway, the portal of relaxing our jaw, our tongue, and inviting spaciousness into the roof of the mouth. The third fundamental is your exhaling breath. Allowing the inhale to take care of itself, just keeping your attention on your exhaling breath. Remembering with the exhale that the ribs come slightly down and down, down towards the earth and down towards the sacrum tailbone area gently knitting the ribs at the end of each exhale, inviting a little bit of tone into your belly. A few more breaths, meditating on grounding, relaxing your palate, and your exhaling breath. Those of you who are seated, transitioning your way onto your back to get ready for dead bug. If you want to do the full dead bug series, you're welcome to go to that video. All I will be doing will be the first two of the dead bug series. So raising one knee, then the other knee. The knee is bent. The lower leg is parallel to the floor and the ceiling. The feet are flexed. Arms up to the ceiling, palms towards each other. Arm bones down elbows bent, knit your ribs. Contralateral, opposite arm to opposite leg. Inhale, right leg, left arm straighten towards the ceiling. Exhale, come back to the bent position. Inhale, left leg, right arm towards the ceiling. Exhale, back to the bent position. Right leg, left arm. Exhale. Inhale, left leg, right arm. Exhale. Continue on with your mind and your breath moving through contralateral dead bug series 
doing the first one with the bent elbows. Finishing your next round and either bringing your feet to the floor or bringing your knees into your chest for a rock and a roll. Then we'll do the second in the series. Legs up, arms up, arm bones down, feet flexed, knit your ribs. Inhaling right leg, left arm out to the side, exhaling back to center. Inhale, left leg, right arm, exhale back to center. So make be, be mindful of not letting your pelvis roll from side to side. Notice how I'm not taking my leg out very far. I'm trying to keep the non-moving leg from moving. Working with your breath, contralateral. Inhale as you move away from your body. Exhale as you come back towards midline. And finishing this round. Bringing your knees into your chest for a rock and a roll. Rolling over onto your side and coming up to tabletop. In tabletop, belly towards the ceiling for cat, belly towards the floor for cow. Gaze goes back between your thighs and cat as you round the back towards the ceiling. Gaze comes forward and up as the spine goes down like cow. Exhale with cat. Inhale with cow. contralateral movement. The next time as you come into tabletop, draw the lower ribs so that you have slightly knit ribs, tone in the belly to support your lower back, long through the back crown of the head. Then raise the left knee and the right arm. You can straighten the left leg, flex the foot, roll the hip down so that your pelvis is neutral. Holding for three, two, one. Hand comes down, knee comes down, cat and cow. Two times, putting in a symmetrical movement in between an asymmetrical pose. Finding your tabletop, knitting your ribs, taking the right knee up, foot flexed, knee bent, taking the left arm out, you can stay here or you can lengthen your leg, roll that right hip down so that your pelvis isn't turned up, but is rolled down. Breathing here, three, two, one, knee comes down, hand comes down, cat and cow. Exhale for cat, inhale for cow. Coming to tabletop, taking your hands, one hand breath forward, curling the toes and pushing back to down dog. In down dog, gently pedaling through your feet, trying to keep your pelvis fairly stable so the SI joint isn't getting twisted as you pedal through. Push the hands way back, bend the knees, reach the pelvis to the wall behind you. End of the exhale, bend the knees, look up to the hands, walk the feet forward. Inhale, lengthening the spine. Exhale, folding. Push down on the feet to come all the way up to mountain. Inhale, up. Exhale, forward fold. Walk the fingers forward, pulling them back, lengthening the spine and the back of the neck. Exhale, fold. Push down all the way up to absolute and back to mountain. Adding on down dog. 
Inhale up. Exhale, bend the knees, tip the pelvis forward, fold. Inhale, lengthening the spine. Exhale, plant your hands, feet step back, down dog. Knees bent, reaching the pelvis to the wall behind you, letting your head hang. End of the exhale, coming forward into plank. In plank, reaching the back of the neck, back of the head, reaching the heels back. End of the exhale, bending your elbows, slowly coming down to prone mountain. Prone mountain, your hands are down by your heart. Press down with the hands, pull back, and then energetically moving your fingers out to the side, turning on the rhomboids, turning on the back muscles, the anterior serratus. End of the exhale, ground the pubic bone. Inhale, coming up into baby cobra. Exhale, coming down. We're gonna do that again. So this time, energetically, press down, pull back, roll the fingers out, coming up into baby cobra. Then energetically, pull your heels towards your sits bones, turning on the hamstring to raise your legs. Taking the hands back, locust pose. Contralateral, raising left leg, right arm. Exhale, down. Left leg, right arm. Exhale, down. Right arm, left leg. Left arm, right leg. Moving with your breath and your mind. This is harder because it's now behind you. So you can't use your eyes to help you with that contralateral movement. And then coming back down to prone mountain. Curling the toes, pushing back through tabletop to down dog. End of the exhale, bend the knees, look up to the hands, other foot walks forward. Inhale, lengthening the spine, exhale, folding. Pushing down to come all the way up and back to mountain. So I talked about how it's part of walking, contralateral movement. So, so as walk. Take your right foot onto the back side of the mat so that you can feel it on the side of your foot and the left foot into the center, just about a stride apart, hands at hips. So as walk, you push off with the right foot, the left knee bends as you bring the weight to the left side. Exhale, you come back onto the right foot. Inhale, look forward and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Notice how the pelvis goes from over the back foot over to the front foot. But the pelvis isn't going up and down. The pelvis is like a drawer that slides in and out. Keep your brain down into deep into your center of gravity. The next time your front knee bends, pausing here, keeping your pelvis right here, lengthen that back leg as it descends, the heel descends down to the ground, the pelvis comes down, the front knee bends. Raise the hip headlights, the chest, bringing your hands to heart or all the way up into high lunge. Knit your ribs anytime your arms are up. Right hip rolls forward anytime the leg is back. And then we bring our hands back to heart center. Push off with the right foot and step forward. Inhale, push off with the left. Right knee bends. Exhale, back. Inhale, forward. Exhale, back. Pelvis is low, center of gravity is low. The initiation is from the back foot to bring the weight over to the front foot. Two more times. Inhale as you come forward. Exhale as you come back. 
the next time you come forward the knee is bent pausing here keeping your pelvis right here as the back heel telescopes down the the hips do not go back they just sink down then raise the pelvic crest open up the chest hands either at heart or arms all the way up into high lunge knit your ribs left hip slightly rotates forward to keep your pelvis stable hands to heart bring your awareness into that back leg as you push off with the leg and you step forward now you can repeat this again inhale coming forward exhale coming back inhale coming forward exhale coming back inhale coming forward pausing here telescoping that heel down pelvis lowers but doesn't go back shin goes forward pelvic crest chest gaze arms all up high lunge arms come down awareness down into your feet push off with the right foot it comes forward exhale back inhale press off the heel pushes off right knee bends inhale coming forward exhale back inhale coming forward exhale back contralateral movement we do it all the time with walking pausing here as that back heel telescopes down pelvis just goes straight down shin and knee goes forward pelvic crest raises chest raises gaze raises arms raise knit your ribs back to hips push off with the right foot stepping forward coming back to the center of your mat sumo inhale lengthening triple flexion shins forward sits bones back knees bend each time you come down remember to knit your ribs so that the over back lower back doesn't overextend. let's add on action and resistance so try to keep them bent while you straighten and try to keep them straight while you bend it'll slow down your movement it'll also get you out of your head and more into your body embodiment helps with grounding and during uncertain times grounding is what we need and the next time you come down pausing here raise the pelvic floor up from basement maybe halfway up to the first floor then raise the right heel lowering down five four three two one pressing down to come up exhale coming down raise the pelvic floor up halfway or maybe to first floor raising your left heel with the pelvic floor slightly engaged lowering down five four three two one contact pushing down to come up remember when the pelvic when any muscle is engaged and you then use it it grows more muscle taking your left toes in your right toes out making sure that your feet are hip width apart so I usually heel toe my front leg out your hips are at your 10 o'clock pull with the heel to bend push to straighten moving with your breath bringing the synovial fluids with its oxygen and its nutrients to your joints. Next time knee bends, pausing here. Make sure that that right hip is slightly raised and then tipping over, bringing your forearm onto your leg. You might want to get that back leg out a little bit further. I like to always get a longer line reach the shin forward pull the thigh back and slightly underneath your sits bones let your left hip roll forward 
as your left shoulder rolls up, arm up, gaze up, knit your ribs of the arm that's up. Would you like to do goddess flow? Sure, let's do that. Take your hand down onto your shin, pull your thigh back as you go into triangle pose. Knit your ribs. With the next inhale, reach up, bend your knee and come into warrior two. Flip the front hand up to the ceiling, back hand onto your thigh, reverse warrior. Straighten the knee, standing gate. Hands down, feet forward, sumo. Two sumos, symmetrical pose between asymmetrical pose. The next time you come up, right heel goes out, left toes go out, heel toe enough room. Pull with the heel to bend, push to straighten. So now your pelvis is at your two o'clock. Let your gaze be at the two o'clock or even straight on to three o'clock. Try to keep away from the temptation to take your gaze forward in anticipation. Be present with where you're at right now. Next time knee bends, pausing here. Inhale to perk up the spine. Exhale, tilting over, bringing your forearm onto your thigh. Let your right hip roll down. Right shoulder rolls up. That brings the twist into your upper back. Arm comes up, gaze comes up. Shin forward, thigh back, tucking the sits bones slightly inward to the medium to get better alignment. Full breaths. Hands down onto the shin. Draw the thigh back as you go into triangle pose, reaching the crown of the head towards the wall in front of you. Then at the next inhale, come all the way up into warrior two. Flipping the front hand, reverse warrior. Straightening the knee, standing gait. Arms down and sumo. The next time you come down to sumo, bring your hands down under your shoulders or if you have a block, you can put the block in the between and then straighten your knees, raising your tail all the way up the wall towards the ceiling behind you so that your pelvis really tilts. Heels go out, maybe you heel toe your feet out. Inhale to look forward, pulling back with your fingers, exhale to fold. Letting your head hang. Forward fold from standing is down regulating. A few more breaths here. And taking coming up, inhale, lengthening, looking forward. Exhale, fold, looking back. Coming up, putting your hand on the block or into the center. So left hand into the center of the block, right hand onto your lower back, pointing, fingers pointing down. Push down with the hand to open up your chest as you look over your right shoulder. Remember to let the hip roll forward. Don't let the hip come up. Keep that back here, stable. If you like, you can take the arm up, but for my purposes, I generally keep my hand down. And then coming back to center, taking your right hand into the center, left hand onto your lower back, press down on the block or the floor to open up your chest, looking over your left shoulder. If you like, once again, you can take the arm up. I generally keep it down. Remember that left hip rolls down, left shoulder rolls up so that more of the twist is coming between your shoulder blades and you're protecting your SI joint in the lower back. Exhale, coming down, hands down. 
bend the knees, walk your hands over to the right foot, left leg extends, walk your hands over to the left foot, right leg extends. Inhale to center, exhale over to the right, inhale to center, exhale over to the right, inhale into center, exhale fold, inhale, halfway lift, knit your ribs, hands to hips, coming all the way up, heel toe, heel toe coming to the top of your mat. Inhale up and forward fold. Bend your knees, tip the pelvis. Walk the fingers forward, pulling them back to lengthen the spine. Plant your hands, feet step back, down dog. Last down dog of the day. Open your eyes, notice where your heels are. Without straightening your knees, tip your pelvis Take the tailbone and try to draw a line up the wall towards the ceiling behind you. Then come forward onto your knees and come all the way back to child's pose. In child's pose, you might need some support underneath. If particularly I've got a bum knee right now, so I would use some support back there. Walk your hands over to the left side, right hand on top of left. Walk your hands over to the right side, left hand on top of right. Coming back to center. Hands under shoulders, pushing up and making your way onto your back. Have your strap close at hand. Coming onto your back, bringing your feet up as close to your sits bones as is comfortable, a little bit wider. Bring your hands, elbows into the waist, fingers goal post, and then push down with the feet as you raise your pelvis and pull the heels towards you, shins forward as you come up into bridge pose. Exhale, coming down. So now let's feel the difference. Press down on the elbows to raise the chest, 21st century fish. Let the chest come down. Shoulder blades will be a little bit closer together. Push down with the feet to raise the pelvis. Pull the heels towards your head. Reach the shins forward. Raise the right heel, left arm. Exhale, down. Left heel, right arm, exhale down. Right heel, left arm, left heel, right arm. One more time. And slowly lowering down, vertebra by vertebra. Let the tailbone unwind and then bring one knee into the chest, the other knee into the chest. Give yourself a rock and a roll. Left leg down to the ground, supine leg stretch, taking the strap, putting it around the ball of your right foot. Straighten the leg until the knee is straight. One hand on each strap, reaching up, outstretch the left leg, knit your ribs, Reach out with the left leg, toes towards the ceiling. Watch my arm bones. Arm bones come down to the back of the socket. Do you see how that moves my leg almost six inches? So draw those arm bones back deep into the socket, using the back muscles to hold up your leg so that you're not using your chin or your tongue or any of the muscles in your chest. Open up the collar bones. Really feel that opening and breathe.
taking both straps into the right hand, again, ground the arm bone down. Can you see that difference? Ground the arm bone down, then go out to the side, only as far as you can go and still keep your left hip on the ground. So your left heel, left knee, left hip, left shoulder, left ear, the left arm are all grounding you from going too far out to the side. Inhale, coming up, crossing over midline, IT band stretch. Coming back to center, one hand on each strap. Walk your hands up the strap as you bring your knee a little bit out and into your chest. And release. Closing your eyes. And taking a moment to notice how it feels one side versus the other. And bending your knees, taking the strap, putting it around the ball of the left foot until the knee is straight. Give yourself enough strap till the knee is straight. Right leg goes out. Arm bones come down to the ground. This is where people have the hardest time. Arm bones come down to the ground, not with the knee bent. The knee has to be absolutely straight to get into the full back fascia line. Notice, see if you can feel your back muscles turning on. Your throat is soft, your tongue is soft, your jaws are soft, your collarbones are broad. Then taking both straps into the left hand, inhale here, exhale out only as far as you can go and still keep right heel, right hip, right shoulder, right ear, all the way on the ground. You're really drawing the left arm bone down into the ground. That is also grounding you. Inhale, coming up crossing over with the other hand. You don't have to come very far. You can just go over until you feel a gentle stretch along your IT band. And coming back to center, one hand on each strap, walking your hands up the strap as you bend the knee, a little bit out to the side, bringing it deep into your armpit, and then release. Bringing your knees into your chest, give yourself a final rock and roll. We've already done one twist, but if you'd like to do clamshell twist, get your block. Put your block between your thighs. Roll over onto the left side first. I'm going right so that I can see you. So left side, knee over knee, hip over hip, shoulder over shoulder, arm in front of you. Inhale, arm up to the ceiling. Exhale, arm out to the side, but notice when you go out, notice that your hip stays over hip, knee stays over hip, and low, knee stay over knee, and lower ribs roll back to the right as your shoulder goes off to the left. I guess you're on your right, you're on your left side, so your shoulder would go off to the right, but you just. Inhale, coming up and in front of you. Recovery breath. Then rolling over onto your other side. I will just move all the way over so that I'm still facing you. It's a better view. Make sure your knees are at least up to your waistband. If not further, don't let them be down here. So you really want to tuck them in nice and tight. Inhale, left arm up, left arm out behind you. Lower ribs go back down to the right. Make sure you have something under your head. You can use your blanket, another block, or you can use your arm. And just breathe, opening up the pec muscles, feeling your breath in your hand. If you can't feel your breath in your hand, ask yourself, where is your breath going? Lightly flexing the feet. And inhale, coming up. Exhale, down to the floor below. Removing the block. Rolling over onto your back and getting ready for Savasana. At this point, 
you can put on soft music. You can listen to the chakra affirmations. Or you can just lay quietly. Savasana is a time the most important part of your yoga practice. It's the dessert after your movement. It gives your brain that opportunity to integrate, assimilate all that contralateral movement, opposite side to opposite side, moving, using your brain. Feel your grounding beneath you. Relax the roof of the mouth and invite ease wherever you're holding on to tension in your body. Do your own body scan. Allow each exhaling breath to go all the way out to the end. Each breath taking the opportunity to feel and hear the sounds around you and ignoring, if you can, just wiggling your fingers and your toes, bending your knees, bringing your feet up by your sits bones. Bringing your knees into your chest for a final rock and roll. Rolling over onto your left side, protecting your arm under your head. Lingering a few more moments. Allowing yourself to slowly adjust. And then straightening the top leg, pushing up, coming forward as you come all the way up into seated position. Rolling forward on your sits bones, together we raise our arms in thanksgiving for the time we've spent together. Hands down to heart center. As we step off our mat, may we love, walk with love and compassion for ourselves and for all those we meet. Namaste.